Start your day with remembrance of us. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalatu wa salamu alika ya rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya habiballah Assalatu wa salamu alika ya nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya nurallah Dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel, welcome back to another beautiful episode on the Silsila, The Early Echo. Alhamdulillah Azawajal, wherever you are in the world, we are hopeful that yourself and your family is safe and sound. Do remember the grief-stricken Ummah of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your du'as. Because in some part of the world, you may find, you may hear, of some Muslims that are suffering, suffering from the effects of oppression. Do make dua for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and remove the oppressors as well. We have uh, another faith refreshing topic of discussion and one which is so important for every Muslim out there, for every believer. We are going to be talking about a believer's most valuable asset. And once again, we are honored to have our respected Hazrat Mawlana Abdul Qadir Mu'ini Qadiri at tari who is going to be sharing some of those Madani pearls of advices. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How's Mawlana Sahib doing? Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Uh, how are you doing, Wazul? Alhamdulillah, it's uh, lovely weather, mashallah. Mashallah. To begin with, and uh, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jiji, the, the shows. Pouring down, and uh, we actually needed it. No doubt, no doubt. Alhamdulillah, Azza wa Jal. We, we need all of it. We need the dry season. We need the heat. We need the rain. We need the cold. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends everything in a balanced way. But it's just us. We don't fully comprehend and understand it. So a little later, we are going to be talking about a believer's most valuable asset. I'm not talking about that lovely house of yours. I'm not talking about your lovely vehicle or lovely cars the money that you have, the investments that you have. I'm not talking about your business or your work, in fact. I'm talking about something that if it is lost, then everything is lost. If it is lost, then there is no hope. We're going to be talking about a believer's most valuable asset. And let's listen to a beautiful narration with regards to excellence of reciting Dhru De Pak. Salawat and salutations upon the cream of creation, the owner of Jannah, the last Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who has said, the one who sends durood upon me, so until he keeps sending it, angels continue supplicating for mercy for him. Subhanallah. Now it is up to him, up to that person whether he recites it more or less. Do I want more mercy or less mercy? That's my decision. That's my choice. If I recite more through the park and salawat, through the mercy of Allah, I will gain more mercy, more barakat and more blessings as well. And as we always advise, firstly ourselves and then to you, the dear listener and, and uh, our audience out there, that every day dedicate some time to recite quran Park, Durood de Park, Istighfar, Dhikrullah, and seeking knowledge of deen from authentic sources which Dawud Islami offers on various platforms, facilities, courses and classes and activities as well. Subhanallah Azawajal. So a little bit more on a believer's most valuable asset after we listen to this wonderful and beautiful kalam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Ghafoor Allahu Ghafoor Allahu Rahim Allahu Rahim Allahu Yuhibbu Al-Muhsineen Huwa Khaliquna Huwa Raziquna Wa Huwa Ala Kulli Shayin Qadeer إن الله على كل شيء قدير
Eşit Allah derdimi bu ahlara ma Rahmeyle başla günahlara ma Hayr aleyhem akşam hem sabahlara ma Hasbi Rabbi Jallallah Allahu Allah Ma fi kalbi gayrullah Allahu Allah Nur Muhammed sallallahu Allahu Allah La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Allah Rabbul mashriqayn wa rabbul maghribayn Fa bi ayyi alai rabbikuma tukadhiban Wo dono mashriqon ka rab hai aur dono maghribon ka rab hai to tum dono apne rab ki कौन कौन सी नेमतों को झुटलाओगे लॉर्ड ऑफ द टू ईस्ट एंड द टू वेस्ट सो विच ऑफ योर लॉर्ड फेवर विल यू डिनाईब सल्लाफुल कलाम एंड यू नो वी लिसन टू दिस कलाम वन ऑफ द रीजन इज टू फर्दर इंक्रीज द लव ऑफ द बिलव रसूल सल्लाहत and uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to madina tayyiba zadaha allah sharafa wa ta'zima time and again Amin. take us to visit aqsa sharif to uh, fu hajj and umrah time and again amin bi jahi khatam an nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so what is a believer's most valuable asset i'm sure many of you may have figured it out by now and that is one's iman one's faith one's faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we only obey allah jalla jalaluhu obey rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we only worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we follow al quran we follow the teachings and the values of islam this faith this iman this is the most prized possession of a believer and remember if this is lost then what hope is there and that is true success some ulama have mentioned that true success of a person is that if they left this dunya with iman success here in in the world is to leave with iman intact i'm going to narrate to you a very faith refreshing incident listen carefully and don't think this iman is something that i can play with that one day i can uh, commit a sin and i'll make toba later allah is all merciful be careful not to fall in these tricks and traps of shaitan it is mentioned that firaun we all know firaun one of the major tyrants and oppressors the world has ever seen yes we have firauns today as well and we will have firauns and oppressors in the future but where have they gone the ones in the past we have the god what legacy they left behind that they were oppressors they were tyrants they were evil allah akbar so his daughter his daughter had a very pious maid a lady who used to tend to her who used to serve her day and night and one day this pious lady who had iman who only worshiped allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she was combing the hair of Firaun's daughter while she's doing this all of a sudden the comb fell down unintentionally she uttered the words bismillah loudly now Firaun's daughter who was not a muslim she heard this and she asked that pious lady did you just praise my father the pharaoh that pious lady said no in fact I have glorified Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala who has created me who has created your father and who has created the entire universe only he is wahdahu la sharik that only he is de- deserving to be worshiped when she mentioned these things Firaun's daughter said that I'm going to tell my father about what you have said that you do not accept him as ilah as god the woman no. replied don't worry no problem tell him she didn't have any uh, fear in her heart and 
Fir'aun was hunting down those who were not worshipping him and executing them. But she said, go and tell him. She tells her father, Fir'aun's daughter tells him that what this woman has said. So he summons her and he asks her, he tells her that I have heard that you worship a god besides me. The woman replied, do whatever you want to do. I will never ever commit kufr. I will hold on firmly to my iman. Allah. Allah. Just then, Fir'aun, the pharaoh, the oppressor, the tyrant, he ordered for some oil to be boiled in a copper cauldron, a huge round pot. When this oil started to boil, her son was brought. He then orders his soldiers and they throw her son into the boiling oil. Allah Akbar. And just then his, his skin melts off and his bones come to the top. One by one, this tyrant, this oppressor, like we have the oppressors of today that are murdering our children out there. He threw all of her children into the boiling oil. But this brave, patient woman, this pious lady, she still did not abandon her iman, her faith. And Pharaoh, he sees that she is unwavering. She is not tilting towards kufr of worshipping him. He orders, he orders that they must take her little baby and throw it into that boiling oil. He orders that they must take her and also throw her inside. Thereafter, the pious lady was thrown into the boiling oil. A little while later, her bones also came to the surface. Allah. Now, there's a hadith that is related to this pious lady, some reference to this pious lady and her children. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that on Laylatul Mi'raj, I came across a very pleasant fragrance. And I asked, O Jibra'il alayhi salam, what is this fragrance? And he alayhi salam replied, this is the fragrance of the maid of Fir'aun's daughter and her children. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. The martyrs, they are never truly dead. Definitely. I mean, how, how many times are you going to die? One time you're going to die. Depends how you die. If you die in haq, on truth, if you fall as a martyr, your way is opened up. But for the tyrants, when they die, they enter into the pits of hellfire. Allah Akbar. So, have you heard? This pious, brave, courageous lady standing up to one of the major oppressors and tyrants that this world have, has ever seen. What about you and I? If anybody has to question us, has to put our iman in doubt, what will be my reaction? Will I allow those doubts to cloud my mind and further confuse me? Or do I know my deen? Do I know what it means to be a Muslim? That a Muslim is one who submits to the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not submitting to one's ego and, and desires. Not submitting to the, the desires of societal pressures. Or people out there, they don't even know us, don't care about us. What a wonderful narration to boost our morale, to boost our iman as well. And I think it's important that we need this. We need these kind of narrations in order for us to become courageous, for us to become brave as well. Definitely. Uh, as Mohasab has uh, mentioned in the very beginning that Iman is something, we, we're talking about your most precious asset. Absolutely. When we talk about asset people in our minds because mm. we have been um, conditioned mm. Mm. in this uh, superficial environment and the trend. Mm that's growing day by day. Like people nowadays, for 
if, if you want to know the value of everything, the value of everything now is determined either by the money or by the mm. assets or the properties mm. or anything that is tangible. Ji, ji. And anything that has monetary value. Mm. Mm. If something does not have monetary value, we tend to disregard that thing as having any value at all. Mm. That's true that. But Iman is something that is intangible. Mm. But this is the value that we are going to carry it to our grave. Not uh, the, the material value, mm. uh, not the monetary value, not the assets, uh, not the shops or the businesses, mm. uh, not our houses, fancy cars or anything as such. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's only our Iman that is going to be with us and our actions. Mm. Therefore, there's a beautiful hadith where the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not look at your faces. Allahu Akbar. But He looks at your heart. Ay, ay, ay. Summary of the hadith, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So what does that tell you? Uh, uh. Where is the place of Iman? Center of the heart is the place for Iman. Mm. Mm. Subhanallah. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala really looks at our sincerity, our mm. level mm. of Iman and the sincerity of actions and the intentions that we do have. Mm, mm. Not the outwardly uh, glamour that's there. We mm. can fool everyone, not mm. our Creator. Allah. Who's our Creator, <laughs> SubhanAllah. Mm. And um, people uh, in the world can be fooled by the glamour and your lavish lifestyle, mm. your affluent mm. status. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has given us all of this. Mm. We can't, I mean, all this does not carry value in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your faces or your bodies. But we get some people out yeah. there, uh, especially on social media, they call them influencers. Yes. And they are trying to influence us towards something, yeah. towards a specific lifestyle, yes. to attain maximum wealth, to become financially free, so we can indulge in worldly things. And the way they portray their lifestyle, sometimes they have this mentality, fake it to make it. That you know, the way they portray it, that the glitz and the glamour, as you mentioned. And many of us Muslims, you know, we get carried away. Hey, I also want that kind of a car, that sports car. I also want, you know, that lifestyle of, you know, going out on my own private yacht and, you know, enjoying my life and being free from all these responsibilities. So, like, what advice can we give to these kind of people, these Muslims that are influenced by these kind of influences and who should rather we be influenced by? SubhanAllah. You know, it reminds me of one um, story that somebody told me once. He said there was this person and he went to a gathering. Mm. And um, usually when he would go to a gathering where he would be invited to an event to partake in a meal or something, mm -hmm. So he went to this party sort of event and he was all dressed up, you know, yeah. prim and proper, as we would like to call it, uh, with the suit and the coat and, you know, properly dressed. Dressed to impress. Dressed to impress, yes. And people used to be impressed mm. by his aura mm. that he would carry mm. and the, the outwardly glamour that he would bring in. Right. And once he was in a situation and he was invited to a party, and it so happened that his clothes weren't ironed, his clothes weren't washed. Mm -hmm. So he he just put on anything. Right. The people have invited me. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, today is one of the days when I don't have. Like, for example, today it's raining in Durban. And, uh, you know, if you uh, never put your clothes out for washing, and, you know, if the washing didn't get dry, then what mm -hmm. are you going to wear? So you right. can't wear wet clothes. Mm -hmm. So he just wore whatever was there, and it didn't look good on him. So when he went to the party, usually when he went, people would say, wow, so-and-so has arrived. Mm -hmm. And they would give him a warm welcome. And this time around, when he went to the party, it's like nobody even cared as to who mm -hmm. he is. Mm -hmm. And he was really taken aback by this uh, attitude of people, mm -hmm. and by this reaction that he received, and he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. So he understood. <clears throat> At the end, he understood. So that respect and the honor that was given to me, it wasn't given to me, mm. to my personality, but it was given to something that is attached to me, that is external, right. that is not part of my personality. Right, right, right. I mean, I'm here, but those wells, no. uh, um, bells and whistles, they're not with me today. Mm. 
So I'm giving this kind of treatment. So next time when he went to the party and he was invited and he went all dressed up well and and when the food was presented to him, he's telling his suit, his cuff, you know, eat it, it's for you. It's not for me. <laughs> Allah, the honor and everything that's presented Allah. here, it's for you. It's not for me because when I come dressed up anyhow, mm. then I don't get any respect. Mm. Mm. I don't get any warm welcome. Nobody wants to so yeah, associate Nobody with wants me. to know me. Mm. And today when I've come, it's because of you I have this respect. Mm. 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 Allah. That's so true, Nasa, because, you know, if you really want to see, you know, if a person is maybe wealthy or influential, yeah. Or, you know, uh, the friends that surround him, generally, as you mentioned, I mean, they do so not to respect him as a person, yes. but to respect his authority, to respect his wealth, to respect his, you know, materialism or his influence and his contacts and connections. And tomorrow, if he loses all of that, then he'll realize, like, okay, so nobody wants to know me. Yes. You know, they, are, they only respected me because of, you know, the influence I had. Yes. In the context I had, or, or, or the, the wealth I had, Allah. But that but is people of true iman, mm, mm. they don't care about all of this. 100%. Their mentality 100%. is such that it doesn't matter. I don't care if nobody in the world knows me or not. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't bother that person. Mm, mm, mm. He must be known and famous in the court of Allah. Allah. That is true fame, Muslim. Yes. Imagine if Allah Akbar, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a person, then it's revealed to Jibra'il Amin alayhi salam that I love this person, you also love this person. Jibra'il Amin alayhi salam goes to the heavens and tells the angels and the inhabitants of heaven, Allah Jalla Jalalu who loves this person, you also love this person. And then inhabitants of earth also love that person. So subhanAllah, this is true fame. True fame is to humble yourself for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, to only worship Allah Azza wa Jal, to keep your Iman intact, to be an obedient slave to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you can get true status, real status, not all this superficial fake status that is out there. And we're talking about Iman of a believer. Don't just feel that, you know what, I, I am born a Muslim, I got a Muslim name, my parents are Muslim, my family is Muslim, so whatever I do in between doesn't matter. Allah is most merciful. And then just you just live a life of sin and disobedience, Allah Akbar. Ulama Ikram have mentioned, the person who does not take care of the protection of his Iman, doesn't worry, doesn't care, does whatever he wants, indulges in whatever sin is there then in all probability, this person could lose their Iman at the time of death. Okay. Then what? If Iman is lost, it's gone, it's over. There's no chance of entering into paradise. I need to think about this. And I need you to ask yourself, we need to ask ourselves, do I care about my Iman? I care about everything else. I care about, you know, making sure that my home is safe and secure. I have the latest uh, alarm systems. Security measures are in place that my, uh, my materialistic possessions are all safe and sound. I take care of those things to protect them. How much do I care about the protection of my Iman? Ask yourself this question. What am I doing to protect my Iman? Am I punctual with my five times Salah? Do I obey Allah Azza wa Jalla and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do I follow the teachings and the, the commands of Al-Quran? Do I fulfill rights of people? Do I do as much good as I can to please Allah? Do I stay away from sinning? Allah. All of these things are going to help for the preservation of Iman. Another is to send a strong message to those of us who are like too confident. Mm, mm. You know, and um, you would hear people say that, you know, I'm not worried about my Iman. My Iman, Alhamdulillah, is protected and guarded. Mm. I don't have to worry. I've got such a strong faith and Iman. I, I don't need to worry about his protection yeah, right. because my iman is strong. I know it. So what's Allah. there to protect? Mm. He wouldn't say the same thing about his assets. If he loses his phone today and, and leaves it somewhere and he can't say that, you know, I don't have to worry about this because uh. I, I know I'm confident it wouldn't be lost if I go and take a walk and come back. Mm. Mm. But about the iman, he can loosely say that, you know, I'm not worried about it. I know my iman will be protected. Mm. Mm. Meaning... He doesn't place that much value on the Iman. Mm, that's true.
if the if he recognized the value of it he, that person wouldn't be found saying that mm, mm, mm. and about uh, the influence of people mouse have spoke about the influences i mean we don't need to know anyone we only know uh, the the madina wali aqa sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is the criterion of our iman he has been made the criterion of iman sayyidi al azat has given us this beautiful mindset leave all these influences and everyone He says, "Unhe jana, unhe mana. Na rakha ghair se kam. Lillahi alhamd, my dunya se Musliman gaya." Hey, 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 hey. So the Madina wale aqa can only guarantee that we leave this dunya with iman. But I need to ask myself as a believer, as a Muslim, like how attached am I to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam? It's one thing to claim that I love Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's a completely different thing if Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam loves you. It's one thing to claim that I love Allah azza wa jalla. and it's a different thing when allah azza wa jalla loves you so we need to think about this don't just waste your life away in all these uh, play and amusements all these entertainments the ceo of all these kinds of entertainments that are out there largely is iblis is shaitan that's his marketing machine to market a specific lifestyle which is contrary to islamic values we see that it's infested with immodesty with immorality with obscenities with vulgarity it's in, and who promotion of alcohol of drugs of premarital relationships of adultery of fornication of gambling and a lewd hedonistic lifestyle this is shaitan wants we have to hold on to this iman yes if you know if you're proud to be a believer it's fine Alhamdulillah in all praise due to Allah I am a believer I'm a Muslim I'm a believer yes be proud to be a believer be thankful to Allah azza wa jalla to be a believer but don't have this mentality that na I don't have to worry be proud that you're a believer that you have iman but pro- continue protecting your iman the shaitan doesn't give up right till the end right till your last breath he doesn't give up this is what he's after The thief of iman is him. Iblis shaitan the cursed and humiliated one. And he has agents amongst the humans, amongst the jinn who also try who assist him, who aid him in trying to corrupt a person's iman with with incorrect beliefs. They try to corrupt a person's uh, a'mal. Little but good we try to do. he tries to corrupt the intention you no know, you know, i'm giving this little charity i'm giving i hope somebody is watching me allah but that riya so be careful of this and the nafsul ammara the desires the ego the self works together with shaitan protect the iman be careful if you lose this this asset if you lose this precious valuable asset then everything is lost doesn't matter how much of name and fame and wealth and influence and connections and contacts and authority that i have in the dunya it's for nothing once a person's eyes closes where's all that gone to stays behind and then if the person left without iman it starts in the qabr it starts in the grave the punishments you won't be able the person won't be able to answer the questions they will fail in that examination and if they fail the fire of jahannam will be lit in that grave the grave becomes a trench from the trenches of jahannam angels of punishment will enter to bash and break that person's body to pieces the grave will close in and will flatten that person will crush that person's body the insects the snakes and scorpions will punish that person it doesn't stop there what about on the day of judgment allah akbar no. think about it my dear viewers and listeners of madani channel protect a protection of iman is something we must take priority of and alhamdulillah azza wa jalla dawud islami is a support structure this is what it is essentially it's a support structure to keep us grounded in correct islamic beliefs alhamdulillah to keep us grounded 
in following the commands of the Quran, following the Sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to become obedient slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to love all Sahaba Ikram, Ahlul Bayt, Awliya Allah, Dawud Islami is that support structure. And don't just keep it for yourself. What about your, your future generations? What about your, your offspring? Allah. What's going to happen to them? You see today, what's up? This, there's this one, just uh, some time back, I saw that uh, ex, so called ex Muslims, where they're proud to say they are not Muslim anymore. And they were, Allah, but they were having t shirts they were wearing, and it was written there, I am awesome without Allah. Will my children go in that direction? Can happen. We don't know. We don't know the divine hidden plan of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. But what am I doing to bolster the Iman as a mother and father, as a grandmother, grandfather, as an uncle or auntie? What am I doing to strengthen, to keep them grounded in Islamic values, Islamic teachings and proper Islamic beliefs? How am I contributing? Don't just leave it to the Mulana Saab and Apa in the Madrasa. Take that as a bonus. First, it's your responsibility. It's your Which parent wants to see that they are going to Jannah? Children are burning in Jahannam. Which parent? Tell me. Obviously, we don't want to. But unfortunately, if we do not care about the preservation of the Iman, and we close our eyes, which direction the wind is going to blow them? Think about this. And you know, honestly, in today's day and age, Dawud Islami is the way. Dawud Islami, you, you, put, you enroll him in Madrasatul Madina, Jamiatul Madina, Darul Madina, our courses, our special classes, our weekly ijtima, daily nek amal, madani qafilas, all of these things, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, all of these things are designed. They are designed to keep us grounded upon proper. Islamic beliefs to strengthen and preserve our Iman. We've got a short uh, clip uh, to further motivate us inshallah about uh, to uh, something that will help us to increase our good deeds inshallah. So sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as believers, we have to ensure that we are sincere in our actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the state of our heart. Perhaps we can deceive creation. We can never deceive the creator, Allah azza wa jal. Whenever you're in a position to serve someone, to help someone, to aid someone, do so sincerely. It shouldn't be for any worldly gain. It should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you receive any worldly gain by means of that, alhamdulillah. But your intention should be for Allah. For example, somebody says to you, uh, why don't you accompany me on this journey? Whether that's to uh, their homeland, whether that's for Haramain Sharifain, a journey to Umrah or Hajj. I want you to help me on this journey or whatever it is. Now, when you are with that person, you should strive and do your utmost to actually help them. That was the maqsad of you going with them. If it's just to go on a holiday, a free journey, expenses have been covered, then how sincere are you? You should try and make their journey their trip as comfortable as possible for them. And we shouldn't do it with these motives that, oh, I'll continue to go with this person for my own gain. I'm benefiting. I don't care how their experience is. So when someone tells you to do something, when somebody has expectations, you should meet those expectations. You should be sincere in this cause, sincere in helping them. Inshallah, you'll be rewarded immensely from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm sure you have learned something from that wonderful clip as well. So again, keep attached to Dawud Islami. You will not regret it. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu states in the glorious Quran, Indeed, those who said, Allah is our Lord, then remained firm upon it. The angels descend upon them, saying, oh, wow. Do not fear, nor grieve, and be happy for the paradise which you were promised. We want that paradise, but we have to remain firm on our iman and our faith as well. What, a, what an inspiring verse of the Quran. We want that Jannah, 
So be firm on Iman. Uh, this firmness actually is what is required of us mm. in, in this mortal life. I mean, nobody lived forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine being is the only one that is everlasting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are from the possibilities. We as human species, any creation, they are from amongst the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, our possibility is such, we are here just for a short time. The world is there for thousands of years. But we, what is the life expectancy of Masab nowadays? 60, yeah, 70. So, yeah. and, and after that, the person remains no more, meaning we won't, we were never there. We are here for a short period of time mm, mm, mm. and we won't be there. So what can we make of this short life mm. that can last us for the life that will be forever? Mm. The life in the hell for those disbelievers, they are going to reside in there forever. Right. Whereas the life of those believers, us, who inshallah, if we leave this dunya with Iman, will stay in Jannah forever. Inshallah. As it is documented in the Holy Quran, promised in the Holy Quran, Khalidina fiha abada. Mm, mm, mm. So, what will get us admission into paradise of Allah is the firmness of Iman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to put it this way when um, I was reading this beautiful sharah of this hadith, Inna al amalu bin niyat. Jay. The intention that we have, and now it relates to Iman. In uh, Ittihafu Sad al Muttaqin, uh, the Shari of Ihya al Muddin, he says that why would a person remain in Jannah forever? Mm. How does it make sense that a person will remain in Jannah forever, right. but our actions are not perpetual? I mean, we are given 60, 70 years of right, life expectancy. Right. Even that maybe, let's say, the first 15 years till the time of puberty, we're not really accounted for, mm, mm. right? And uh, so how does this make up for the perpetual blessing that we'll enjoy in Jannah? He says it's the intention, it's not so much the actions, because mm. actions, if it only depended on actions, then actions will only last as far as the life cycle continues. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And then it will, it will come to a discontinuation. Yeah. But we will remain in Jannah forever. And those the dwellers of hell, they will remain in hell forever. So how does this make sense? Mm. He says we would not uh, stay in Jannah forever or the dwellers of hell would not stay in hell forever based on the actions, but on the intentions. Allah. Why? Because... A believer had the intention that if I had been given more life and if uh, I continued to live longer, Allah. I would still continue to live obeying Allah mm -hmm. and his mm -hmm. beloved Habib Sallallahu Whereas a disbeliever, he had this intention that if I continued to live for longer, mm -hmm. I would still be adamant and I would still be firm on my disbelief. And mm -hmm. therefore, why we, we will stay in Jannah forever and those who will go to hell, will stay in hell forever on account of the inner thoughts, mm. the inner belief. Mm. So if we had Allah. this firm belief on Iman, mm. and inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us more life, we would still be on Iman. Therefore, a person who stays and resides in Jannah will reside in Jannah forever on mm. account mm. of one's intention. Allah. And you know, and it, it all makes sense. Like you see, Amir Ahl Sunnah, Damat Barakatum Aliya, always encouraging the good intentions. Always make good intentions. Your nek amal that you're filling out. Your first question is about: Did you make good intentions today? And you will see in this environment of Dawud Islami, always starting off bayan and dars and you know that good intentions. So make an intention to practice upon this and teach your next generations, your children, your offspring as well. We'll catch you next time only on Madani Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Allahu